You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Our house, this is the house of the neighborhood where Carly returned home minutes after she was found, after she returned there. You can see the police lights in the distance. Hoover police confirmed they received a phone call around 1045 that she had returned home. Fire department showed up, police showed up, of course, to look, ho her, look her over, see how she was doing. They took her to UAB hospital where she is being evaluated right now. Yo, YouTube, YouTube, what's going on? Trade back again to y'all with another video. Hope y'all are having a very great day. Hope y'all had a very great weekend also. My day is going absolutely fabulous. Big shout out to all the channel members. All subscribers of the Trade King Show family. And much love to each and every last one of you all. And you all, we have a story out of Alabama by way of Hoover. And big shout out to everybody in the great state of Alabama. Everybody in the great city of Hoover. Now, before I start this story, I want to send a special thank you all to my channel members and also to my subscribers for sending me this story. And also, keep these stories coming. Now, also before I start this story, I want you all to put on your thinking caps because this story right here really demands some thinking and also some uh, explanations, if you will. Now, just a few days ago, we had a 25-year-old woman who go by the name of Carlithia Russell who was leaving work and on her way to get her mom something to eat and mysteriously... She says she's seen a child on the side of the highway. Yes. And the highway goes by the name of I-459. And it's a big, long highway in Alabama that's running through Hoover. Now, she says she's seen a child on the side of the road. And she stopped to pull over to check on a child or whatnot. It was a toddler. And the person that said that she was on the phone with was her brother girlfriend, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, please correct me in the comments section. Now, upon this person saying they heard Carlitia ask the child, was the child okay? And then also heard Carlitia scream. They said that's when the phone went blank. But my whole question, this is right here. I mean, as you all see the video footage when it first started, the video footage is roughly like three minutes long. Now, if you see a child on the side of a highway, you must ask yourself this right here. Now, how many other cars seen this child if it was a child on the side of the highway? Because as the video shows, it was no child on the side of the highway unless you all see something that I don't see. And also, you have to ask yourself this. What kind of person use a child as a decoy on the highway? I understand. We have seen movies and we also heard real stories of these kidnappers using children to lure people in. You know what I'm saying? Playing on people's weaknesses. But at the same time, think about this to yourself. Would that be a smart move for a kidnapper to do? To sit up there and use a child as a decoy on the highway, knowing that anybody can pull up and stop and check on this so-called child, whether it's a police or maybe somebody that's armed with a gun. So ask yourself once again, would that be an ideal location to try to kidnap somebody at? I mean, when most people kidnap somebody, and from stories I've heard and I have done, because I have done countless stories, nine times out of ten, it's on rural roads, back roads, and also like parking lots, and also shopping center parking lots. Rarely do you ever hear somebody getting kidnapped off the interstate. Now, as you all also know, for those who watched that video, if you have not watched that whole video, please go back and watch that whole video where it shows Carlita slowly pulling on the side of the road. And then just a few minutes later, you see police is pulled up right behind her. So the police couldn't have been that far behind her. But at the same time, the story goes that she called 911. But even the police department themselves said they did not receive any phone calls of a child being reported missing. So that's kind of suspect also. And also what makes the story even more crazier is the fact that this took place Thursday night and Carlita wind up on her parents' doorstep, yes, Saturday night, around 1045 to 11 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. So that's kind of strange right there also because you would think that if you've been missing or uh, allegedly kidnapped, the first spot you would do, the first thing you would do is try to get to the nearest residence to notify the police and also your parents. I mean, think about this. Now, I've heard several stories of them saying that she was dropped off at her parents' house. Then I heard another story saying she walked to her parents' house. But at the same time, if somebody dropped her off at her parents' house, who was this person? Why are they not bringing this person's name up? And also, by her being missing for two days, she had to have been somewhere. So where was she at for her to walk home like that? I mean, that's not being said. But at the same time, they were saying, well, her family saying that she is traumatized and they suspect something had happened. But we need to know what exactly happened. Now, I want you all to also understand this right here. I am no way convicting this woman right here. 
But at the same time, I want you all to understand, we just searching for the truth, even though I know some people are going to get mad, but we need to know the truth. But I want you all to know something also before I dig deep to the story. They had raised roughly between twenty-five to thirty-five or forty thousand dollars uh to find Carlita. Now twenty thousand was donated anonymously by some person who just out of the clear blue just donated twenty thousand, which is a good noble thing. And then also Crime Stoppers put up another five thousand dollars. And they also said more people have donated trying to find Carlita. Now I want to know this right here. Who in the hell got that money or did the money go back to the people or did the money go to Carlita or did it go to her family? Because that's very important also, because I'm going to tell you this right here. Something is not clean in a buttermilk. Anyway, we'll break the wrist down as I read a snippet from this story. I'm going to read a quick snippet from this story and I am going to get my opinion. All of it. Mm. Surely, as we go, Alabama woman mysteriously vanishes after stopping on highway to help wandering Tyler. But guess what? We didn't see no damn Tala. I didn't see nothing like that. Only thing I seen was cars driving by. And ask yourself this right here. If you drive down a highway and you suspect you see a child on the side of the highway, because I have been driving plenty of times at night, and I thought I seen somebody over there in the bushes, or I thought I may have seen something that wasn't there. You know, your mind do play tricks on you. So I understand that. But back to what I was saying, if you thought you seen a child and you have vehicles in front of you, not even 20 feet in front of her, as you all see, and also right behind her, don't you think somebody would have seen this child by now? And also, once again, like I told you on the beginning of the video, who in the hell lured somebody to be kidnapped off a highway? Because you wouldn't know what type of person you get. You don't know if they have guns on them. You don't know if they know karate or if they're law enforcement. You just don't know. It's too risky. Like I told y'all, when most people kidnap somebody, it's in rural areas. It's in parking lots. Stuff like that. It's never hardly on a damn highway, even though I can't believe that it does happen. But this is very strange right here. And also, this DOT camera, this Department of Transportation camera, I have seen other cameras did countless other videos at nighttime showing these cameras were showing better than what this camera showing right here. And I understand it was blurry. You know, the cars, lights makes the camera's lens blurry. But at the same time, we have seen better footage than that. Anyway, an Alabama woman vanished Thursday night after stopping to help a toddler she spotted wandering along a busy highway. Carlita Carly Nicole Russell, 25 years old, had already called 911 and was talking with a family member as she pulled off I-459 to check on the child when the line mysteriously went silent but remained open according to the Hoover Police Department. Now, also, this right here, if the line went silent and she was gone and the police pulled up about three minutes right after this incident, where in the hell did she go that fast? That's why I won't know right there. Now, some people say that maybe she was dragged into the woods or taken into the woods. But guess what, though? It wouldn't be a missing person then. It would be a kidnapping. So either she was kidnapped or she was just missing or to had some kind of mental episode. I mean, let's just be for real. Anyway, now when officers arrived just minutes later, as you all see in the video I've been playing right here in the corner, they found Russell's running car, cell phone, and purse, but no sign of her or the child. But like I told y'all in the beginning of the video, even though some people are going to get mad, those are just people who don't try to reason or who ain't trying to think. You know what I'm saying? We're not trying to convict nobody. The only thing we want is the truth. You get what I'm saying? Because guess what? That could be me or you. But we need to know the truth, even though I understand that some people can't handle the truth. You feel me? Anyway, but ask yourself this. What type of person will take a risk of kidnapping somebody? Number one, you don't know who that person is. And then at the same time, you leave their car running and then you leave their cell phone. That don't make any sense. Now, I understand it would make good sense to leave a cell phone because the cell phone has a GPS tracking device on it. It can track you. I understand that part. So maybe that's the reason why. But if that's true, guess what? That means she was kidnapped and it's not a missing person. So which one is it? The people need to know the truth. And also, when has it been this hard to get to the damn truth? And like my parents used to tell me when I was young, you know, when I used to try to make up lies and everything, I'm not saying that she's lying or her family lying. We just making sense out of this. Like, you know, when a person have to sit up there and tell a lie, they have to tell another lie to cover the first lie. And then also, a lie is harder to tell than the truth. The truth just flows freely. You get what I'm saying? It makes sense. Lies is what don't make sense. Anyway, let's continue. Now, this comes from Lieutenant Daniel Lowe from the Hoover Police Department. He said this right here, as you all see at the bottom. Hoover Police had not received any additional calls of someone missing a small child. Now, if somebody was missing a small child in that area, guess what? The police will be notified unless this child come from another state or somewhere far off. But guess what, though? It still will be an amber alert of a child missing. You get what I'm saying? 
So I'm going to ask you good people this right here. Did the state of Alabama issue out an Amber Alert for a missing child Thursday or even Wednesday? Please let me know because that would help also. Now, the story also says the woman mother believes someone took advantage of Russell, whose guard was lower in the moments after calling 911 and felt secure being on the phone with her brother's girlfriend. But if somebody took advantage of her, why is all the news saying that it's a missing person who mysteriously vanished just like this caption said? Not too many of them even say if you can even find one and say that she was kidnapped. So Isla, like I told y'all, she was kidnapped or she was a missing person. Which one is it? And also, if you was a missing person and just say somebody dropped her off, like I said, who in the hell dropped her off? And also the person that dropped off didn't know she was missing. I mean, did she herself not know that she was missing? But also, what person that has been missing for two days just wind up mysteriously at their parents' home on their doorsteps and nothing's being said about it? I mean, and it's like it's just a hush-hush type situation. I don't understand that. Anyway, now, that this come from Carly's mother, Talitia Russell. She says this, my son's girlfriend heard her asking a child, are you okay? She never heard the child say anything, but then she heard our daughter scream. Now, if your daughter screamed, what terrified her? And then you also have people saying that it was a light-skinned guy with a great vehicle. But guess what, though? If that's the case, many other people would have seen that also, and the camera would have picked that up. So where was this light-skinned guy hiding at? Some people say he was hiding behind the sign. But as I put that on my computer and I zoomed in and I uh, magnified, you know, the brightness of it, I did not see nobody back there. It did not show anything. So where was this mysteriously light-skinned guy hiding at? And also, where was the mysteriously great vehicle at? That's what one of the so-called witnesses had stated to the police also. So you have to ask yourself all that. And then what make it even more strange is the fact that Carly mom says her son girlfriend heard Carly ask the child, was the child okay? And then that's when she heard her scream. So if you heard her scream, like I told y'all quite a few times now, either something scared her, something had to terrify her. So what was it? And why is that not being said? It's so easy to say that. But I understand people going to say, well, Trey, she's traumatized. She need time. I understand that also. So that's something to think about, people. But anyway, let's close up. The story goes on to say, from there, all you hear on her phone is background noise from the interstate and cars you're driving by so regular. But like I told you all, this right here, look, I am no way trying to convict Carly. I am glad she made it home safe for people who listen to the video long enough. They're going to hear that part. For people who didn't, they'll turn off, and that's fine because they don't want to hear the truth anyway. They just want you to ride with the narrative. The narrative is this right here. We need to know the truth of what really happened because we have people really out here getting kidnapped and we also have people out here who are really missing and we're still looking for those same people. But is it quite fitting that somebody would get off work around 10 something, wind up missing for two days and then they don't wind up at the police station, they don't wind up at the hospital, they just wind up on their parents' doorsteps and nothing is being said about it. Only thing we was getting is little bits and pieces here and there. That don't make any sense. I'm going to let you all know how I feel about this whole story. Something that's off about it. A lot of things is not being said. It's a lot of information being held back. Now, was this a host or was this a tool to try to get GoFundMe money or reward money? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you this right here. Look here. If you have to search this hard for the truth, chances are somebody is trying to hide it because the truth speaks for itself. And it needs nobody to help it to stand. Anyway, you all let me know what you think about this story, what you think happened to Carly, and also... What kind of person would kidnap somebody off a damn highway if it was that? And also, if you heard somebody scream, would it not be a kidnapping, meaning somebody had tried to attack her or did abduct her? So why is the news and the media saying that it was a missing person? That's what I want you all to tell me right there. Anyway, if you like the video, push that like button. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel, become a channel member. Also, share the video with your family and friends. So next time, you all stay blessed. And I will see you all soon on the next Trey King Show. And guess what? I'm out.